What's up everybody, it's Hunter Avalone here, and I have just returned from giving a speech at Penn State University. Believe me, it was quite the experience. We conservatives don't care about being politically correct. If someone is acting like a we're fine just calling them out about that. The line comes all the way down through here. The event was all about censorship, and it featured both me and Sargon of Akkad. In fact, it was even labeled as one of the most controversial events of the semester. Although I don't agree with Sargon on a lot, it was still really great to come together and have a discussion, because I think that's what makes conservatism so great. Of course, there was also a lot of negative press labeling me as a transphobe. There was apparently so much negative attention, it even warranted Penn State University publicly denouncing me. On top of all this, there were protesters the day me and Sargon arrived. People are gathered out here today um, to protest the speakers who Turning Point is hosting today. Um, Sargon of Akkad, aka Carl Benjamin, and Hunter Avalone, who are known as like, far-right provocateurs on YouTube, and as I have just like a really, a lot of hateful things about people in marginalized communities. I do want to give a special shout out to my guys behind enemy lines, Justin Cox and Jason Hamilton. They both infiltrated enemy lines and managed to capture some footage of these hilarious protests. So go ahead and give them a follow on Instagram. <laughs> The protests were pretty laughable, aside from the fact that Antifa was apparently there. They had organized a big sit-in and then a march. However, this sit-in looked a lot more like people just venting and talking about their feelings being hurt. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Justin. I'm here with TPUSA at Penn State University. Today, we are going to be infiltrating the Sargon of Akkad and Hunter Avalon protest. And they're going to think that we support them, but in reality, we're just there to find out to see what stupid stuff they're protesting today. What's your thought on have Hunter Avalon or Avalon, whatever his name is? Yeah, I'll be honest. I haven't really, heard, I hadn't really heard that much about him before this event started. All I know is that he made a video that says that's like that was called like uh, the truth about trans people, and I know that okay. he's transphobic. Well, to be honest, I didn't know. Who either of them were when they first came, probably because I don't really pay attention to actual far-right YouTubers. Um, so I had to do some pretty extensive research, but... <sighs> Carl Benjamin in particular um, is an extreme threat to myself, my gender, and let alone all of the religious minorities. Who's YouTube? I don't have a YouTube. Alt right YouTuber. What alt right YouTuber? Who's an alt right YouTuber? Not me. It's not really hate speech. The guy isn't like saying anything. He's just saying what he wants to say. Like, exactly. Honestly, the basic was a regular speech. Yeah. So, but they think it's hate speech. I'm like, I think you're the one that's misunderstanding what's going on, or you're just offended by what he's saying. So, as a college Democrat, and also my personal philosophy is that hate speech is not welcome anywhere, especially on a college campus where we have already minoritized and marginalized students who are completely unsafe from these speakers, from the rhetoric that they're using. So, um, our club put out a statement a few days ago uh, calling for the dechartering of Turning Point. Despite all this, I still managed to give a really interesting speech on censorship and more importantly, how us conservatives oftentimes play the victim and ignore the nuance surrounding the issue of censorship. The line comes all the way down through here. It goes all the way down in through here. like half of your There was a line Shit, it wraps all the way around. So here's my speech. It may be something a little bit differently than what you were expecting, but please enjoy and let me know what you think. Without further ado, let's get a little taste of our first speaker. 
Today, we're going to be looking at Hunter Avalon. This is a channel that I absolutely despise. I'm telling you to shut the f*** up because I don't like you and I think you're a piece of s*** for being here. So why do you not like Donald Trump? For my sure you can see I do actually like Trump, but I'm very curious to hear your opinion. I believe that being pro-gay is actually really conservative. Being pro-gay is actually conservative! Shut the f*** up, idiot. Refusing to vaccinate your child is child abuse. Go to Hunter Avalon's page and flag all of his videos. I was given no warnings and I didn't even receive three strikes. My channel was just completely terminated. I'm back. I am transgender. Stop caring if people pass or not. Stop celebrating transgender people just for existing. And stop gatekeeping who is trans and who isn't. He comes out and says what he has to say, and guess what? I agree with just about 100% of whatever he has to say. Vaccines can cause autism. Ironically enough, it's the idiots who peddle this myth that appear to have mental health issues. This isn't what it looks like. Quite honestly, I do feel that I've done more for the LGBT community than you, Alyssa. Ha! <laughs> All right. That's hilarious. No, I have a response to that. Hunter Avalon, you are just brilliant. That dude is cool. And he gets so much hate. What, right, what's one right that a man has that a woman doesn't? People hate that the man can come out and say what he has to say. He has valid points. You would rather me be quiet about the horrors the LGBT people face under Islam no, than dare to speak about be it because quiet. you don't want me to look Islamophobic. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite gay looking straight boy, Hunter Avalo. You should have. Yeah. Hey there, everyone. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. And thank you to Turning Point USA for hosting this wonderful event. Uh, today, I want to talk about censorship. And more specifically, how we... Can I take this off? I'm sorry. Yeah, can I hold this? That way I can get passionate. <laughs> Today, I want to talk about censorship, and more specifically, how we conservatives are being censored online. Conservative channels are quickly becoming obsolete on YouTube, and white men are instantly demonetized. In fact, Fox News has found that if you even mention Trump in a positive way online, you have a 99% chance of being banned from the entire internet. <laughs> Obviously, guys, it's okay, I'm, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I am exaggerating, but there are far too many people who genuinely think this way and expected this kind of a speech from me tonight. But you may be surprised to know, I think there are many more layers to this discussion about big tech censorship. Conservatives are not being censored online the way big conservative names have claimed. These big conservatives encouraging you to play the victim and blame the fact that you're a conservative for any difficulties are lying to you because they only care about fame and money. I'm against playing the victim, and far too often conservatives are quick to play victim anytime their social media accounts fluctuate. The topic of censorship is a controversial one, and I think there is certainly big tech bias against conservative voices on specific social media platforms, but this is a nuanced discussion that can't be summed up as easily as, yes, conservatives are being censored online. You may have come here expecting something entirely different from me. In fact, I'm pretty sure there are people outside right now protesting my speech. And I can assure everyone protesting me, I'm not a Nazi, all right guys? And any protester claiming I am one should probably spend more time studying history instead of protesting someone they've never even listened to. So I'm not gonna tell anyone what they want to hear. Instead, I wanna look at what the facts say so we can all stop living as victims and instead work to further our conservative beliefs across the online sphere. So this is the truth about censorship. I wanna begin with my first point, censorship, what is and is not happening. Anytime the discussion about big tech censorship arises, you're quick to hear right-wing pundits invoke freedom of speech. But big tech censorship is not a free speech issue. Even if all claims of censorship are 100% true, this would still not be a free speech issue. The First Amendment protects us from government infringing on our freedom of speech. Facebook, along with all the other social media platforms, are free to ban people as it's a private company. 
In the summer of this year, Justice Brett Kavanaugh wrote for a divided five to four court that a private entity, excuse me, a private entity that opens its property for speech by others is not transformed by that fact alone into a state actor and therefore is free to censor users. Another common conservative argument is that social media platforms are behaving as a publisher rather than a platform. This is not true either, as social media platforms have community guidelines which are within their rights to enforce where publishers are held legally responsible for the content. Publishers also approve all material before it's published and with 300 hours of video uploaded to YouTube every minute, it would be ludicrous to suggest it's even within possibility to approve all material before it's published, making YouTube along with other social media sites a platform. Now, although big tech censorship isn't a free speech issue, it doesn't mean censorship is somehow a good thing. But far too often, conservative voices oversimplify the issue of censorship, either deliberately in an attempt to garner victim points or due to assumptions based on misinformation. Many of you know that I'm a conservative YouTuber. I am one of the largest conservative channels on YouTube, and I'm also one of the youngest conservative content creators. If anyone has an understanding of YouTube as well as the censorship on the platform, it's me. Back in the month of April, I woke up one morning to discover something shocking. As a new father, this was something that was especially terrifying for me. I woke up to find out that my YouTube account had been terminated. I had over 630,000 subscribers one day, and poof, the next day, my entire account, along with nearly 100 million total channel views, was gone. I'm sure you can guess that day was a very stressful one. I support my wife and my new baby on the revenue I earn from YouTube, and to have that suddenly stripped away without warning was really, quite honestly, devastating. Thankfully, after seven painful hours, my channel was reinstated. Now, this would be an easy scenario for me to blame censorship. Here's a perfect chance for me to claim I'm a victim due to my conservative beliefs. However, the fact that my channel was so quickly reinstated is proof against conservative censorship rather than for it. Far too often, conservatives quickly blame the fact that they're conservative for any online penalty, when in reality, there's a much higher correlation among conservatives and edgy content. We conservatives don't care about being politically correct. If someone is acting like a retard, we're fine just calling them out about that. Because of this, we also tend to cross the line and break the rules more often, resulting in more online penalties. It's a conservative value of mine to take personal responsibility, and an instance such as this is really no different. Now, on the flip side, I agree that YouTube has room to improve, and you and I may not like the YouTube rules and guidelines, but if you get pulled over for speeding, you may not like the fact that the speed limit is only 30 miles an hour, but that doesn't change the fact that these rules exist and breaking them will result in consequences. It's also important to note that it's not in YouTube's best interest to terminate conservative channels. YouTube is a business at the end of the day and they want money. So the more conservative channels, the more users being brought to their platform, the better. And I think we all have capitalism to thank for that. Lastly, these issues are not exclusive to conservatives by any means. Over my time on YouTube, I've seen apolitical channels get terminated by mistake repeatedly. I've seen LGBT content creators file a lawsuit claiming censorship and discrimination. And I've even seen the Democratic candidate, Tulsi Gabbard, file a $50 million lawsuit claiming censorship. So if big tech censorship exists, it's happening to everyone. All right, YouTube is like communism. Everyone suffers equally. <laughs> Lending further doubt to the sweeping claim that conservatives are constantly censored online, Fa Facebook's best performing pages skew conservative data from social media monitor Newswhip shows. In February, Fox News received significantly more interactions than any other publisher on Facebook, with more than 45 million engagements. The UK's conservative-leading Daily Mail came second, followed by Cuck News Network, CNN, and right-wing pundit Ben Shapiro's website, The Daily Wire. So if big tech is targeting and censoring conservatives, they aren't really doing a very good job. 
Media Matters, a left-leaning organization, tracked 463 Facebook pages that actively posted about politics to an audience of 500,000 or more followers. Over the course of the six-month study, right-leaning pages had 51% more interactions than left-wing pages. Finally, a study from The Economist found no evidence of ideological bias in Google search results. We're the side that claims to value facts over feelings. But you won't hear this data from any other conservatives because the big name conservatives are operating on their feelings in a cheap attempt to push a victim narrative. As conservatives, we constantly criticize our society for creating a culture that rewards the victim, yet too many conservatives nowadays are profiting off that exact culture they claim to be against. Big conservative companies like PragerU have the audacity to sue YouTube because some of their content doesn't appear when YouTube is in restricted mode, a mode usually turned on at libraries or schools to block content that's not necessarily safe for work. However, a researcher at the think tank Data and Society found algorithmic reasons those videos might have been flagged. One video began with the word rape, which could have been automatically detected. Many of their videos deal with sensitive topics such as the Holocaust, and most, if not all, controversial videos, regardless of political slant, are not available when YouTube is in restricted mode. But to many people, these facts don't matter because there's currency in victimhood. So I've explained the nuance around censorship and how the claims of many conservatives are unfounded. So this brings us to my second point. Is big tech censorship happening to conservatives at all? Yes, but not in the way that you've been told. I don't think there's conservative censorship on YouTube specifically, but I do think at the very least, bias against conservatives exists on Facebook and certainly on Twitter. Although there's no way to test the validity of these claims, a former Facebook insider who was interviewed by Project Veritas said, the social media giant has allegedly developed an entire set of tools that it frequently uses to suppress conservative voices and target outspoken right-leaning users. I do believe these claims are a bit uh, sketchy, especially according to the data I previously cited on right-leaning Facebook pages outperforming left-wing pages. Regardless, here is potential algorithmic bias, yet conservatives don't focus on these potential real issues and instead peddle anecdotal evidence to champion their claims. Twitter is also notorious for shadow banning and flat out suspending conservative voices. I think this boils down to the fact that Facebook and Twitter are operated by liberals. Many times the decision to ban a user comes down to a human reviewer where there's room for human error as well as bias. But again, it's not in the company's best interest to censor or ban anyone, and even in instances where certain conservative content creators like Diamond and Silk have been censored, the error was acknowledged by the company and reversed. So although censorship may not be the right word, I do think political bias exists and can negatively impact the decisions made by big tech when it comes to conservative content creators. Finally, we come to my last point, why it's easy to believe big tech is censoring conservatives. Although conservatives should take personal responsibility and stop playing the victim, big tech needs to do their part as well. According to the Washington Post, research reveals one likely reason why these claims of censorship continue. Facebook and Google don't make clear either their guidelines or reasoning for accepting or rejecting paid political content or the process by which they make those decisions. This lack of transparency may lead outsiders to believe the worst, especially when tech chief executives make political statements that don't accord with their prospective customers' beliefs. So although censorship isn't happening at the level many claim, big tech needs to provide more transparency and the, around their rules and how they make decisions. This, this current lack of explanation leads many to assume that these big tech companies are out to get them. Back in 2017, I was banned from Twitter and I've been banned ever since. At the time, I was quick to claim censorship or bias. But looking back now, I can see the guidelines I'd probably violated, no matter how ridiculous they might be. I appealed the decision and only received a brief, automated email explaining that my account was permanently suspended due to violating the Twitter guidelines on targeted harassment. 
of course I was confused. Uh, I was given no examples of this so-called harassment, and I was never given a further explanation. This lack of transparency and communication made it easy for me to believe that I was a victim of big tech censorship. Even the data and society researcher who looked into PragerU's claims noted that YouTube's lack of transparency makes it difficult to identify the algorithms and processes behind deletions. This is true because the decision process is, excuse me, because the decision making process is so murky and kept so quiet with little or no communication other than automated emails, this creates a breeding ground for conspiracy theories about big tech censorship to fester. So in summary, big tech censorship is not as black and white as many make it out to be. Bias exists and can negatively impact decisions within Facebook and Twitter, but it seems there is no real censorship of conservatives on YouTube. We need to remember that any difficulty we face is not directly because we are conservative. This is a victim mentality that sadly is propagated by many loud conservative voices who really just care about their bottom line. I am not a victim and neither are you. You have an uncensored voice, so use it for good. Don't be afraid to spread your conservative beliefs online. Do so respectfully and truthfully, and you along with thousands of other conservatives can build a successful online community. And that's the truth, the truth about censorship. We also had a successful Q&A where me and Sargon were able to further discuss our disagreements as well as answer some wonderful questions from the audience. Well, what, 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 we've just given <laughs> you examples. I'm able to, what, I'm, well, you, I'm giving examples. What of examples would you like? like what would you satisfy? I'm giving examples of actual data based on studies that have been conducted that didn't find ideological, base, uh, I, ideological bias in Google search results. And I'm sorry, but anecdotal evidence or an internal memo doesn't really hold up when you compare it to the data. Yeah, but then, you can, then you can just listen to them saying it. Like Tim Cook says it's their responsibility to promote social justice. He'll say it like he's a preacher at a pulpit. Like this is an ideological goal. Sure. Like this is the same thing. Well, yeah, Conti I mean, said. these of, of course these people have their own political beliefs, but and I, so we have this, the, the, the people at the top saying they want to do it. We've got the memos of them doing it. We've got people like James Damore who get fired for simply saying that perhaps there is some sort of science behind the connection between biology and gender. And then you've got all of the, I mean, there's currently a conservative union in Facebook because they're constantly being... Well, I do think that Facebook is a lot worse than Google and YouTube. I, I think they're all as bad as one another at this point. I mean, it's, it's constantly happening. Not at all. No, you, we cannot say it's, they're all as bad. I think Twitter out of all of them is the worst because Twitter, I mean, Twitter is ridiculous. All right, I think that, that uh, uh, cons if anywhere conservative bias exists, it's on Twitter, but not on YouTube. And it's not at all the same on YouTube when massive conservative channels are able to thrive. Look at how- I think YouTube is the best for it. You're right. I you're, do you're, think YouTube is the best option. They're the best option. option at the moment, but I don't think there's any doubt that, I mean, there's so much evidence out there that I, I'm surprised you're I just haven't really heard any evidence and I've been able to give far more evidence on the contrary. I, okay. Well, I think that the, the discussion about immigration is usually it's very one-sided. So it's either the leftist argument, which is open borders, let everyone just kind of walk into the country, who cares? And then a lot of the times we have people who are more you know, farther right that say like, no immigration, we don't want any immigration. I think we do need to find a good balance and I think Trump has done a really good job at that. One thing that I do think needs to be talked about more by conservatives and liberals is that yes, we do have a problem with illegal immigration. Yes, we do need to build the wall. Data has shown that places where, you know, in a smaller scale where there are walls, uh, immigration or illegal immigration yeah. greatly decreases. And, but we also need to make the process to become an illegal immigrant here easier. So right now it's unfair that there, it, it's easier right now to cross the border illegally than it would be to ever become a US citizen. I think that's a problem, and those policies almost support illegal immigration without really intentionally doing that. So 
I don't think there's ever going to be a way to fully keep everyone in their own country. And I think that part that it's okay for obviously for you know immigrants to come here legally. I think that the best thing that we can do is kind of like what Trump has already been talking about as far as building the wall. But then I think we need to improve our immigration process and system to make it easier so that we can have more legal vetted immigrants welcomed into our country. My question is actually for Hunter. So I noticed that in your video, your introduction video, you had said something. There was like a gray mask with a watermelon. You kind of like it's not what it looks like. Or you had said that you know you, you what you had helped the LGBT community more than whoever the other girl was, or something like that. And that you all you like tell the truth about black people. So I wanted to know because I don't know those videos, what it is that you were actually talking about in the videos, or like how you feel like you've actually helped the LGBTQ community, or like what that truth was that you were saying about black people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of the a lot of my content is. So I, uh, someone else earlier was talking about edgy humor and edgy content. I also really like edgy content. So I usually like to present my ideas with like an edgier skit at the beginning. So that video, uh, The Truth About Black People, is called, it's, I titled it that because I knew it would be inflammatory and I knew that people would really be shocked and kind of have to click on it to see what it's all about. But when you actually get into the meat of the video, I was actually debunking some pretty um, common race realist uh, myths that are peddled by like, alt-right people who basically argue that um, low IQs in black people is due to race and genetics. Very controversial and very kind of like defunct science, to be honest. Um, so that's actually what that video was. It, was. it was actually going after the people who are against black people, but I presented in a way that still kind of takes that inflammatory uh, approach because that's just, that's kind of how my brain is. It's fun, that's why. It is you fun. Know, it's you fun know, to it's push boundaries. I'll, I'll, I will, I'll get to that too, don't worry. But um, I think that trying to protect any minority group from jokes is the opposite of equality. So if, P I mean, LGBT people want to, the LGBT community wants to be treated as equals. So... I will make fun of the LGBT community just like I'll make fun of white people, black people, Asian people, and everyone else. Totally agree. So that's what equality is. Equality means being treated like an equal member of society, and our society makes jokes about people. Our society makes jokes at people's expense. You see that? What are we gonna hate? What are we gonna have more episodes and more experiences of the dad and Ben son? You did one episode about as like a teaser, and then I was like, I was expecting more. Are there gonna be any more episodes? There will be more. Don't worry. There will be more. As a conservative, and there have been studies done that have shown that conservatives who express their viewpoints and their assignments tend to receive lower grades. I was wondering if you had any advice or any opinions you'd like to share on that topic and anything that might be able to help me out. Sure. Uh, well, what I would say is you're absolutely correct. There is certainly an issue with uh, conservative censorship on college campuses. I also know there was another study that found, I think it was 98% of professors leaned left. Maybe something, it was majority of the professors on college campuses lean left. So you're absolutely correct in the notion that academic conservative censorship exists. What I would recommend you do is uh, sh never shut up. That would be my first tip is never shut up because the left, they use these tactics like the lower grades and the intimidation to try and get you to shut up. So if you shut up, then you've essentially validated their tactics to censor you. So, and, and when I say, you know, don't shut up, I'm not saying run around spouting everywhere, oh, I like Trump, Trump's the best, or whatever, but do so respectfully. Well, then and maybe. Don't, <laughs> and don't let yourself be intimidated by the leftist tactics, because if you, along with other conservative students, refuse to be intimidated by these tactics, then you can. I think that you will begin to sort of turn that around a little bit. All in all, this was a phenomenal experience and I can't wait to go to more college campuses and give more speeches. I think it was really funny that there were so many protesters who really didn't even know that much about me, but all in all, I'm really glad I went to the event. Special thanks to Turning Point USA for hosting me. They were very accommodating and it was a great experience. So thanks everyone for watching. Give this video a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Peace.